you're much welcome to this session where we want to talk about the structure of hemoglobin and its composition. Hemoglobin, in hematology, we cover this hemoglobin and later we see how it is estimated in the laboratory. And this hemoglobin is found in red cells whereby we normally say that hemoglobin is a red pigment. Hemoglobin is a red pigment found in red cells. Pigment found in RBCs. So red cells, they are called red cells due to presence of hemoglobin. And this hemoglobin, it measures, if we want to measure it, it is measures 668,000 daltons. And it is composed of four prosthetic heme groups plus four globin chain. Whereby we have four prosthetic heme groups, and these heme groups, each polypeptide chain, the alpha, the alpha, beta, and beta whereby I'm using an example of adult hemoglobin, HbA. That HbA, which is an adult hemoglobin, has two alpha and two beta. And each globin chain has a hemoprosthetic group. And this hemoprosthetic group, they always have iron in ferrous state at the center. And each heme carries one molecule of oxygen, each heme group carries a molecule of oxygen. So meaning, if, I, if we, they ask you that how many molecules of, hemo, of oxygen are carried by one hemoglobin, those are four. There are four molecules of oxygen, but in terms of atoms, there are eight, which are carried by one hemoglobin. Because we have seen one hemoglobin has four heme groups and four globin chains. And these globin chains, they are made for the normal hemoglobin, that is the adult, they have two alpha and two beta chain, two alpha and two. This is polypeptide, polypeptide chain. Because it's composed of many amino acids and these polypeptide chains for the alpha, the alpha contains 141 amino acids, whereas beta contains 146 amino acids. So it is a long polypeptide chain composing or composed of different amino acids. And we shall also see later that a mutation in a single amino acid can result into what we call hemoglobinopathies. So we are seeing the structure of him is Hemoglobin is that it has the four prosthetic heme groups with iron at the center, whereby um, I have zoomed this. So if this is one heme, this is the second heme attached, this is the third heme group, and this is the fourth heme group. And I'm, I'm zooming this one here. So this structure is for only heme. So this is the structure of heme whereby I have extracted one heme from here and I have enlarged it here. And we are saying this heme, they have iron at the center and this iron at the center is surrounded by tetrapyral ring. So this heme, it has what we call tetrapyral ring, tetrapyral ring, tetra means the four, there are four of them. One, two, three, four. And these tetrapyral rings are joined together by a methane group. By a methane, whereby we see methane group here, another methane, another methane, and another methane. They are joined together by the methane group, and these meet at the, the center where we have iron in ferrous state, at the center. So this is 
what makes up the porphyrin ring. So this is the porphyrin ring. And if a porphyrin ring I add iron, I form what we call him, which is always blood red in color. So this is the structure of him, whereby it has iron in ferrous state at the center, joined to four pyrrole rings, and these rings join together by the methane group. Then we have also seen that the structure of the globin, it is made up of the long polypeptide chain of amino acids, whereby the alpha has 141, the beta has 146 amino acids. So when I join globin chains, four globin chains, with the four prosthetic hemogroups, I form a fully functioning hemoglobin, and we have seen that in, we have noted that one hemoglobin carries four oxygen molecules. So this is the one structure of him. Then I have enlarged the structure. This is the hemoglobin, structure of hemoglobin, and this is the structure of him. This is him, but this is hemoglobin, whereby we have the globin chains with him molecules attached to it. So this is basically the structure of hemoglobin. And as we go on, we can look at the composition of normal hemoglobins. We can look at normal hemoglobins. And normal hemoglobins, we have HbA, that is adult hemoglobin. We have HbA2. We have HbF, what we call phytohemoglobin. Whereby this HbA is composed of two alpha and two beta, and its percentage composition is 96 to 98 percent in a normal adult. In a normal adult human being, we find them having 96 to 98 percent of the HbA. Then HbA2, for it is composed of two alpha and two, two delta. Delta is written like this, two alpha and two delta, and they form 1.5 to 3.5 percent in a normal adult human being. Then this one is found majorly in the fetus, but in adults, we find only it is composed of two alpha and two gamma, and its composition should be less than 2% or 1% in adult human beings. Oh. So this is the normal hemoglobin and their composition. Whereby HbA has 2 alpha, 2 beta, HbA2 has 2 alpha and 2 delta, and HbF has 2 alpha and 2 gamma. So this is the composition of the norm. But also we have embryonic hemoglobins. And embryonic hemoglobins, we shall see them later, whereby we shall see embryonic hemoglobins like GOA1, GOA2, and Portland. So these are also other normal hemoglobin found in the embryo. 